So good evening, everyone. Hope you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to do my lecture number 75, which is based on the latest guidelines published in 2024, uh, which is about glucocorticoid induced adrenal insufficiency. Uh, these were recently published in the Endocrine Society guidelines, as well as part of the European Society of Endocrinology. They were published in June 2024 in the JCEM. So again, it's an extremely important session for uh, specialty exams, European board exams, MRCP, and also for clinical practice and endocrinology board exams. Of course, in our clinical practice, we come across many such scenarios where we need to think about the uh, long-term use of glucocorticoids and their impact on adrenal insufficiency. So let's see the guidelines via case-based approach. So in this case scenario, so I'll be discussing two particular cases, uh, which uh, will help us uh, put into context the guidelines which were released in 2024. So patient one, we have a 53-year-old woman with history of rheumatoid arthritis. She is intermittently using her prednisone for the last four years. And uh, last 18 months, she has been using prednisone 10 mg each morning for the last 18 months. Six months ago, she was initiated on a non-steroidal agent. Multiple failed attempts to discontinue prednisolone for the last four months due to fatigue, nausea, myalgia, and arthralgia. So despite attempting to reduce or discontinue prednisolone by putting in a non-steroidal or a steroid sparing agent has failed and the patient has got fatigue, nausea, myalgia, and arthralgia. So what should be the next step in this case scenario? Patient two is a 47-year-old woman with history of surgically treated meningioma, which was diagnosed eight months ago. She had surgery three months ago, post-operative initiation on dexamethasone four milligram twice daily, and currently she's on dexamethasone one mg twice a day. She is referred to endocrinology because cortisol level was measured, and this was found to be undetectable. So what's the next step in this case scenario? Now, these are two patients. Uh, and we are going to look now into the guidelines and then towards the end of the session, we look what is the logical steps to be taken in this two cases based on the guidelines. So definitions of certain things as prescribed in the guidelines is glucocorticoid exposure should be considered as a multidimensional risk factor, including dose and frequency, administration mode, duration of therapy, potency of glucocorticoid and individual susceptibility. So duration of glucocorticoid, which is likely to pose a risk of adrenal insufficiency as defined in the guidelines is three to four weeks or greater. Again, this can be a very important uh, MCQ uh, in the forthcoming exams. So the dose of glucocorticoid therapy, which is uh, at posing a risk for adrenal insufficiency is any dose greater than the daily hydrocortisone equivalent of 15 to 25 mg which will be then equal to 4 to 6 mg of prednisone or prednisolone or 3 to 5 mg of methylprednisolone or 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 mg of dexamethasone. Again, these two definitions, extremely important in terms of the exams, have appeared as MCQ in the past and will definitely appear as MCQs in the coming exams. So what have they defined as physiological daily dose equivalent? So daily glucocorticoid dose equivalent to average daily cortisol production, which is 15 to 25 mg hydrocortisone or 4 to 6 mg prednisone or prednisone or 3 to 5 mg of methylprednisolone or 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 mg dexamethasone. So anything more than this will be then posing a risk for adrenal insufficiency. And this is the physiological daily dose equivalent, which I just mentioned. What is supraphysiological glucocorticoid therapy? Any dose which is greater than the physiological daily dose equivalent and thus it will pose a risk of for developing adrenaline. What is defined as short-term glucocorticoid therapy? Any glucocorticoid therapy of less than three to four weeks duration. What is long-term glucocorticoid therapy? Glucocorticoid therapy greater than three to four weeks duration with glucocorticoid doses greater than the physiological daily doses mentioned above. What is glucocorticoid tapering? Tapering of glucocorticoid therapy initially guided by the management of underlying disease that is equivalent to therapeutic taper and later by the management of glucocorticoid withdrawal symptoms and adrenal insufficiency, which is then referred to as the endocrine taper. So these are some important definitions which are mentioned in the guidelines. So the clinical questions which have been discussed in uh, 
the guidelines is what is the incidence of recovery of the hypothalamic pituitary axis in patients with glucocorticoid induced adrenal insufficiency? Second, which clinical or biochemical parameter predict recovery of HPA axis in patients with glucocorticoid induced adrenal insufficiency? Third, what is the optimal tapering scheme in patients no longer requiring chronic glucocorticoid treatment for underlying condition? And fourth, what is the diagnostic accuracy of a morning cortisol value versus a synaptic stimulation test in diagnosing glucocorticoid induced adrenal insufficiency? We'll try to answer all these four clinical questions in the next slides. So the first question, which is the incidence of recovery of the HP axis in patients with glucocorticoid-induced adrenal insufficiency. So if we retest after four weeks, there is a decrease in the incidence of adrenal insufficiency from 39 to 15% uh, as per studies. This was published in JPM in 2015. And if we retest after six months, there is a decrease in incidence of adrenal insufficiency from 56 to 25%. So defining populations and responsibilities. So guidelines recommend, we recommend that in general, patients on or tapering of glucocorticoids for non-endocrine conditions do not need to be essentially evaluated by an endocrinology specialist. Glucocorticoids can be used for a variety of non-endocrine diseases, as we know, like inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disorders, atopic and allergic conditions, and prevention of transplant rejection. One portion of the population on chronic steroid use uh, glucocorticoid therapy is generally a medical skill and endocrine specialist evaluation may not always be necessary and always you should have a good uh, partnership with the prescribers. So in terms of uh, guidelines as we go further that uh, we recommend that clinicians who implement treatment with glucocorticoids educate patients about the various endocrine aspects of glucocorticoid therapy and they also recommend that patients of glucocorticoid therapy have access to current up-to-date and appropriate information about different endocrine aspects of glucocorticoid therapy. When to taper and when not to taper, that's the question. So we suggest not to taper glucocorticoids in patients on short-term glucocorticoid therapy. We already saw that in the definition, which is less than three to four weeks, irrespective of the dose. In these cases, glucocorticoids can be stopped without testing due to the low concern for hypothalamopituitary axis suppression. So this is very important to note irrespective of the dose, if the glucocorticoid therapy is less than three to four weeks, no need to taper. There are time and dose thresholds for suppressing the HP axis and to develop risk for glucocorticoid adrenal insufficiency. And in this case scenarios, we should then think about tapering. So treatment, which is lasting for more than three to four weeks, as I mentioned, and when the dose is more than the physiological daily dose equivalent, as already mentioned in the previous slide. These are the conditions when we should taper. When we should not taper is when, even respect to the dose, if the duration is less than three to four weeks. So below these thresholds, no taper necessary. So glucocorticoid taper for patients on long-term glucocorticoid therapy should only be attempted if the underlying disease for which the glucocorticoids were prescribed is controlled, and then glucocorticoids are no longer required. In these cases, glucocorticoids are tapered until approaching a physiological daily dose equivalent. So we have seen what is the physiological daily dose equivalent. So it should be slowly tapered till we come to that particular dose level, and then we should consider it discontinuing it in the coming weeks. So very important that most of the patients who are on steroids are then put on steroid sparing agents, and then slowly the tapering of steroids are started in this case scenario, unless and until we reach the physiological daily dose equivalent, and then only discontinuation is considered. Only taper when disease is controlled, this is extremely important, or glucocorticoids are not necessary anymore. A suggested tapering regimen depending upon glucocorticoid dose, this is the other clinical question which we're answering here. So supposedly the patient's current daily prednisone equivalent dose is more than 40 mg. We, we suggest decreasing by 5 to 10 mg every week. If it is 20 to 40, then we suggest 5 mg decrease every week. If it is 10 to 20, then 2.5 mg decrease every one to four weeks. If it is 5 to 10 mg, 1 mg decrease every 1 to 4 weeks. And if it is 5 mg, in the absence of clinical symptoms or negative testing for adrenal insufficiency, continue 1 mg decrease every 4 weeks. So this is how we do a tapering regimen depending upon the glucocorticoid dose. So we are now with our cases as well. 
So is testing for adrenal insufficiency necessary? That was another clinical question, which was important. So uh, it's important to note that uh, the guidelines recommend against routine testing for adrenal insufficiency in patients on supraphysiological doses of glucocorticoids, or if they are still in need of glucocorticoid treatment for the underlying dose. Because in this, it will be almost impossible to assess if, uh, if the adrenal insufficiency is present or not. So the guidelines clearly recommend against routine testing for adrenal insufficiency in patients on supraphysiological doses of glucocorticoids or if they are still in need of glucocorticoid treatment for underlying disease. Only testing will be further when they are shifted gradually to the physiological dose. So does glucocorticoid type use impact the likelihood of adrenal insufficiency? Clearly, uh, we can see that the longer acting uh, glucocorticoids like dexamethasone, they have the highest uh, potency. So patients taking long acting glucocorticoids, example, dexamethasone or betamethasone should be switched to shorter acting before we consider uh, withdrawing them. So like hydrocortisone or prednisolone, when long acting glucocorticoids are no longer needed. So we can clearly see that the most longer acting are the ones like dexamethasone and betamethasone. And gradually our plan should be to switch these patients on shorter acting glucocorticoids, which have a shorter plasma half-life and biological half-life uh, compared to the longer acting ones like dexamethasone. So clearly mentioned in this slide that consider taking, uh, switching the patients to shorter acting glucocorticoids before considering the uh, withdrawal because to reduce the uh, uh, impact of the likelihood of uh, adrenal recovery. So that's the end of my free view. If you'd like to have an access to the full session, we'll be discussing about the further concepts about glucocorticoid withdrawal, and we'll be solving those two cases which we discussed in the slide beginning. So we, if you'd like to subscribe to my full uh, session, please uh, subscribe to my lecture series. Thank you.